Welcome back to Bitsby Trippin'. We got another real good video here for you. This is one that's been asked for on our suggestion window for quite a long time in Discord. What it comes down to is people that are modifying their AMD graphics cards, updating the BIOS rather. That process hasn't been really clearly explained in a very short and quick and concise video. There are several people that make that attempt. We've even made that attempt across live streams to show a very clear and concise version of this. So that's really what this video aims for. Now doing this activity, you're going to need a couple pieces of software, and it's usually the regular pieces of software that you would have on your mining rig when using Windows as your miner. You're going to want to download DDU, which is the device driver uninstaller, GPU-Z, the latest version of Afterburner, and you'll need to grab the latest version of the AMD drivers. Now in this instance, we're going to be using the latest minimal set of drivers, not the blockchain drivers due to stability issues. In addition, you're going to need ATI WinFlash, and if you were creating the actual BIOS for your upgrade, you would need the Polaris Editor, all links which are provided below in this description. And we'll make sure that they're available on our website at bitsbytrippin.com. Now let's get into this from a very straightforward, clear and concise, fresh build setup. Using the ASRock H110 Pro BTC with a 7100i3 and 8 gigs of memory gives us a good platform to start this build. Now we're only going to do six cards in this particular fashion, but you could technically do this with all the way up to eight in Windows with the AMD brands. Currently, Windows does have a limit of only eight cards of any particular brand type, i.e. eight AMD or eight NVIDIA cards. BIOS updates are only for AMD graphics cards as NVIDIA has their BIOS locked down. Now the software configuration of this rig is pretty simple. It's Windows 10 Professional, it's a fresh build, and essentially we've just installed the cards and plugged the drive in. As it comes up, the very first task that we have is to run the DDU. Essentially we wanna make sure there are no drivers related to AMD on this build before starting this. You'll open it and select Clean and Restart. Essentially this will remove all of the registry keys and everything that's related to the AMD driver on this particular SSD for this build. After it's completed, it will restart and ensure that the automatic detection and installation is turned off. It does that for you. So when it comes up, you essentially have a device manager that will show a whole bunch of cards that are not installed, or their driver set up rather. You'll navigate to AMD's website. You'll download the latest minimal driver set that you can. In this particular instance, we're grabbing the latest that are available to us here in mid-October of 2017. You'll install choosing the default options, i.e. this is the minimalist driver, so this should be under 50 megs and not have all the extra stuff that you wouldn't want with the full set driver set. Once this is installed, as you'll see in the device manager here, this process takes about six to 10 minutes depending on your CPU that you have configured with your miner. The cell run machines take anywhere from 12 to 13 minutes. Ones with i3s will go down as low as six minutes. You'll essentially watch this go and install all the cards. And after it's completed, it'll give the driver set will give you a finished statement. You'll hit close and restart the machine. Now your first order business, now that the machine has all the drivers set up on all the cards and it's the default setup, you wanna do a baseline. So we're just launching the multi-miner here and running option 33 just to test its performance with Holdable and Ubik. We can see a 22.4 mega hash result, a total of about 134 mega hash for six cards and pushing out about 117 watts of usage per card. Now that the baseline is done, we're going to walk through installing essentially a pre-downloaded configured by BBT modification for these particular cards, which are the Red Dragon RX 570 4 gig GPUs. Now we've made this BIOS available in part of the description already pre-configured. So in this particular setup, you would navigate to PowerShell by clicking on the command window, typing in PowerShell, and then right-clicking on and running it as an administrator. Now once in here, you want to navigate to the folder at which you've downloaded ATI Windows. Flash. Now we put it on the root of C under a folder called card mod. So you can see the path there. Then you want to run the command ATI flash space minus I. That essentially gives you just a quick indicator that PowerShell sees all the cards and you see that you get the full count of the six that you have installed in your machine if you're doing six. If you had eight cards, you'd have eight cards show up on this display. Then you wanna go ahead and push the flashed BIOS to all the cards. This is a much simpler way than trying to install three cards and only do three at a time with the Windows version of ATI WinFlash. You would do this by typing ATI flash space minus F, then another space minus P, and then a space and then the target ID for the card which would be zero through five in this case. So we're gonna start with zero and then hit enter. Now we'll do this for each card. So when you hit enter, it'll run, it'll take about 30 seconds or less per card and you'll just hit the up arrow to rerun the neck, the same command and just change the actual adapter ID. So zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Once that's all completed, you'll need to reboot the computer. 
Once the computer comes back up, immediately the ATI driver will detect that something's wrong with the BIOS that's there and you will get a code 43 on all the cards. No fear, you run the pixel patcher, which is also provided in the download links in the description. And all this essentially does is a device driver signing to ensure that the enforcement of the BIOS has a check. So essentially we're just kind of cheating the system of saying that, no, the BIOS we put on there is good and telling the system that it's okay. Once we've done that and we've hit okay, we reboot. Once the machine comes back up, we're gonna go ahead and launch our tools to monitor, essentially GPU-Z under the sensor tab, and then under afterburner, just before we can start making some settings changes. And we'll take a baseline here real quick to see what the mod did for the cards. We can see right out of the gate, 25.3 mega hash, a three mega hash increase just from the timing switch from the BIOS. That puts the machine at about 150 mega hash at about 122 watts per card. Right after that, we'll do the last piece here of just doing some simple modifications. On this particular BIOS, it really likes 1150 and 2000 watts on the memory. This will push the entire machine to 172 mega hash with a 28.7 mega hash per card, roughly at 121 watts. Now, the next series of this would have us going through and modding voltages and playing a lot with the GPU power and the power limits to reduce the power on these. But essentially, this is all it takes. Those would be the next steps that you would do, and we can cover those in another video. This video really wanted to stay firm and focused on just the art of putting a BIOS consistently on your cards through PowerShell, saving you a lot of time and headache. Hopefully this one was real informative and we'll do a follow up to this one with advanced modifications such as GPU, power limits, undervolting, and we'll take a few cards as an example on this. Please like and subscribe if you guys like this new video series of trying to bring you clear and concise information. BBT is committed on making sure that individual contributors and the community voices are heard and bringing you some of the best content when it comes to GPU mining. Thanks for watching and don't forget to share.